Okay, a system is in equilibrium. Um, we've got a hinge point here, a strut, a mass. And then um, that guy's at theta, and then this is coming out at phi. And the question wants the tension in the cable. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put my tension this way because this is my mg force from this. Um, <clears throat> and the strut itself is 45 kilograms. And then phi is 30 degrees. Theta is 45 degrees. And um, it wants the tension in the cable and both the horizontal and vertical components of the force on the strut from the hinge. So this guy is applying forces in both directions. So I'm going to call this FHY and FHX. Okay, so we've got a few forces here on this hinge. Um, so to get these, we're going to need the tension, but to get the tension, um, so if we try to use uh, that our sum of forces is zero, that's going to be tricky. Um, but we can use the sum of torques using this as a hinge point. So our sum of torques must also be zero because we're in equilibrium. Um, so let's go through and figure out each of the torques. So for our tension, um, our torque is going to be our tension cross our R, um, which is tension R sine theta, or sine, um, I use <coughs> gamma here. Um, now to figure out the angle that we are referring to, um, we put the vectors uh, tail to tail here. Oops. So let's do this. Like this. So our tension kind of points out this way. And our R points out this way. Um, and now just to relate them to some angles that are in the question here so we can figure things out. So we've got um, all right, so that's our phi. That's our theta there. Um, this angle in here is uh, 180 minus theta. <laughs> and so um, this angle up here must be, I'm just extending this out. Um, yeah, just extending this out. So this angle and this angle are the same. This angle up here is 180 minus 180 minus theta minus phi, which is equal to uh, theta minus phi. So that makes that theta minus phi, and it makes that um, 180. <laughs> Can't see what I'm doing, you. Oh. Torque. All right. That makes that uh, 180 minus 180 minus theta 
minus <laughs> minus uh, theta minus pi, sorry. Okay, so then this equals, um, so these 180s are going to cancel, theta minus theta minus phi, which equals uh, minus, uh, uh, minus theta minus phi, so phi plus phi. Makes sense. <laughs> so this angle in here is just phi. So this is actually a similar triangle here. Um, which means, finally, that um, this angle, so our gamma angle, which is the full angle that's the difference between the two, is 180 minus theta plus phi. Ooh, okay. And then the sine of 180 minus theta plus phi um, is just the sine of minus minus theta plus phi. which is the sine of theta minus phi. <clears throat> All right, done. <laughs> um, okay, so that's, that's our gamma there. So this is uh, T R sine of theta minus phi. And now uh, we need to assign a direction if we're going to do it this way. Uh, so we're gonna use right hand rule. So that means uh, put your fingers in the direction of the force. Put your fingers in the direction of the force. Uh, your palm in the direction of, um, of where the angle is gonna to go to the R. So that would be your palm going on that side, and then your thumb points in the direction of the torque. And so our, our thumb points into the page, and I'm going to have the into the page be the negative, uh, the negative direction for torque. And so our torque, finally for our tension, is just TR sine theta minus phi, and we can put in some values here, and TR sine of 15 degrees. Um, and actually, instead of R, I should have used, um, does it say how long the, <clears throat> does it say how long the strut is? Um, I guess I use uh, L actually for the length of the strut. So L, L, L. So I'll just use L for the length of the strut, um, and that'll just come in later. Okay, so there's our tension. It took a while, but it's okay. Uh, so our mg force for the strut. Um, so uh, this one I should have said. So not the 225 kilogram. Our tension is again is now mg cross r. Um, I'm just putting kind of a vector symbol over the whole thing, which is a little inappropriate, but that's okay. Um, so there's our strut, there's our mg force. Now this one should be significantly easier as this angle here is our theta. And so we can see that mg, and it applies, it's applying to L over two, right? So it's half the length, so mg L over two. And I'm gonna use gamma again for this angle because I'm just gonna use that for each one of my torques. And we can see that our gamma angle this time is 90 plus theta. So this equals mg L over two, sine of 90 plus theta, which is just mg L over two uh, cos theta. 
Okay. Um, and we, again, we can put in values and call this mg l over 2 cosine of uh, 45. <laughs> Very intrigued by this. Okay. And then last, our last torque is our 225 kg torque. Uh, two, 25 kg torque. So our torque is um, 225 kilograms times uh, g. And I'm just putting that in just so that we know where it is. It's going to sit at L and sine gamma. So there's our, our 225 kg times g. And again this angle is going to be the same as our previous one. So it'll be 90 plus theta and we know that this is going to give us a cos So it's pretty much the same. Um, oh yeah, and I forgot, should have done the right hand rule here. So um, our fingers point in the direction of the force, our palm in the direction of L, and our thumb points straight up, meaning these are both positive torques. Okay, so there's my three torques. So now my sum of torques is um, from my uh, tension, which is um, minus T L, and that was um, sine of 15, um, <clears throat> plus my mass of my strut, which was 45 uh, kilograms. times my g, 9.8 meters per second squared, times the cosine of 45, um, and then uh, plus my uh, 225 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, times the cosine of 45. Um, and so we can, and this all equals zero, so we can rearrange this for the tension. So we can see, um, and these, sorry, I should have had an L over 2 there and an L here. Uh, we can see we can cancel our L's. And so our t we can rearrange for our tension as um, 45 kilograms. 9.8 meters per second squared times the cosine 45 over 2 plus 225 times 9.8 times the cosine 45 all over um, the sine of 15 degrees. So running this through our calculator um, we get uh, 6,626.5891 newtons. I'm just using a fairly large number of significant figures there to make sure I don't miss anything. Um, and now just double checking here. Uh, so they, uh, so just with, for part A, um, so again, we're just using some of torques. Um, and for sine, we had sine of 15. They used sine of 45, which is not correct. Um, but the funny thing is, uh, sine of 45 equals cos of 45, so it doesn't matter. Which is why the numbers come out the same. Um, so that's okay. Um, okay. 
So then um, we want to solve for, so now that we have our tension, we want to solve for our horizontal and vertical forces. So for B, we have um, F net equals zero. So our, some of our uh, forces in our X, if we look at our diagram again, or maybe I'll just redraw it in retrospect. So we have our strut, we have our tension, we have our um, 225 kilogram, we have our 45 kilogram, and then we have our hinge forces in the X and the Y. Okay? Um, and we already figured out that this angle here is phi. So we can break down our, our tension by looking at that angle. So we've got, this is a 30 degree angle, and this will be T cos 30, and this will be T sine 30. And so then, um, now if we look at our x direction, um, our, our sum of our fx is just um, our hinge force minus our t cos theta, cos of 30 degrees. And so then our hinge force in the x direction is just our tension times the cosine of 30, which comes out to 57.38.79 newtons. Okay? And then if we look in our y direction for c, We have uh, a few forces, so we have our hinge y, we have our mg for our struts, so 45 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, our mg for the 225 kilograms is And um, a uh, from our tension, so our minus t sine thirty. Uh, and I might as well put a t in there, so put all the other values in. Uh, sixty-six twenty-six point five eight nine times the sine of thirty. So we can rearrange for our f y hinge, and that would be. <coughs> 59.29 newtons. And so there's our x and y components of our hinge forces. Uh, if we check through the solution here, so it's about 57.40, so that looks good, and about 59.60, so that looks good as well. Um, okay, so used uh, sine 45 instead of cos 45 in A. Um, no numerical difference in this problem, but would be for um, other angles. Yep. Um, still is mostly correct.